I'm going to share with you how you can build a portfolio as a digital marketing data analyst so that you can get a job in the field even if you don't have a degree in marketing. I know because I've been doing this job for many, many years and I've even been on the other side of the hiring table as a hiring manager. So I can tell you what actually stands out, what actually matters, what skills actually don't matter and how you can stand out in job interviews with your portfolio. Stick around because you may be surprised about what actually matters versus what doesn't. So I'm going to give you five key things that you want to add to your portfolio and some resources and websites on how you can go about and actually add these things and build a really cool portfolio that really stands out from all the other job candidates. And before I get started, one important disclaimer is that this is for a unique role, which is a digital marketing data analyst, which is a type of data analyst, but it's not like your traditional data analyst. This job has some numbers, but it's much so more about pooling analytics with tools, uh, setting up those analytics collections with tag management, and then visualizing them in a dashboard versus constantly crunching numbers with programming languages like SQL. So th there is a bit of that, but let's dive in and that's an important distinction. So first and foremost, let's cover what you need to first need to build a portfolio. You typically need some type of website. Now there are some plenty of free websites with some free tools out there that you can use to build uh, a portfolio. A couple that come to mind include Wix as well as strikingly.com, but there's so much, uh, so many others out there. I really don't think the tool of choice uh, is the bulk of it. So I recommend just choosing a good tool and then moving on. Essentially, these tools and websites help you kind of build your online portfolio so that you can go to a link that you share with your uh, potential employer and then they go there and they see a visual representation showing that you actually know what you're doing and not just saying it so plenty of good tools out there don't focus too much on this part because it's not so much about the mechanism it's actually about showing you actually have the skills versus pretending because everyone can lie and say oh yeah I can do SQL programming but they really can't so that's what they're really screening for. And that brings us to the second point, which is arguably more important, which is once you've identified a tool like this and how to use it, um, you need to actually add data visualizations to this tool. Now go for quality over quantity. Anyone who's not familiar with what data viz means, it basically is a dashboard tool that allows you to bring various marketing uh, data from multiple sources together into one dashboard so that it's easily digestible and concise for leadership. So some of the big ones out there include Tableau, Power BI, and Google Looker Studio. I think Google Looker Studio is a great place to start. Um, there are free versions of the other tools, but Google Looker Studio is essentially completely free until you start to like, get really intensive with the data and you're, you're push, pushing your quota. So if you're just starting out and trying to build a portfolio, then frankly, I think Looker Studio is a great start, but certainly a lot of those other tools could be useful too, because when you look at the job postings these days, oftentimes they will mention Tableau or Power BI first. So see what you can do, but essentially what you wanna do is you're not trying to build tons of different dashboards and, and increase the quantity as much as you are trying to really demonstrate you know what you're doing. So quality first over quantity, just do you know one really good dashboard, show some visualizations, uh, maybe a link out to it, some screenshots, and show that you've, you're actually able to play with this data and turn it into something useful. There's sample data online you can pull them and then you gotta turn that into actually useful questions that leaders actually want. You can kind of tell the level of experience um, depending on what type of questions you answer with these data viz tools. There's certainly been um, some more beginners I've seen in the job candidate screening process where 
you you just know they don't really know they don't have that experience yet because the questions that they try and answer with the tools are not things that leaders would actually care about so you know an example would be what is the gender ratio of this website i mean that's certainly something semi useful but it's not something that leaders are typically asking and pressing for so that's usually more of an indicator to me when i'm screening it that they're just pulling numbers for the sake of pulling numbers because there's a metric out there for it. So some sample business questions that you could put in the heading of, of that dashboard and then have charts underneath could be something like, um, how much traffic is coming to the site and what's the tra traffic breakdown by uh, marketing channel? And then you know of that traffic, how much of that traffic is actually converting to sales or converting to a lead or taking a key action? And so these are some key things that leaders actually care about that's often asked. So moving on to number three, the third thing that you wanna consider is programming languages. Now, as mentioned, it's not gonna be as intensive as a typical you know, data analyst or data scientist, but Typically, they wouldn't mind, they actually care about some light SQL and programming experience. If you have a bit of Python, sometimes that matters too, depending on a job posting. Always go back to the job posting because they're not just writing bullets in there for the sake of it. Those technical skills are things that they actually care about. And so when you don't have them, don't just say, oh, I'm screwed. Say, how can I get them? There are some really affordable Udemy courses for 20 bucks that will teach you from A to Z how, how to program SQL. So there's plenty of resources out there that you can use to bring into your portfolio. One of them is a website called Kaggle, that's K-A-G-G-L-E, and it'll provide a bunch of sample SQL data sets for you. And then you could just pick one, like one of the common ones is an IMDB database of movies. And then you can demonstrate in your portfolio by pulling in the Kaggle data and then playing with it. Answer some important but you know useful questions through that and then show that you can write the code to answer that. And then you can put that in your portfolio and it actually shows rather than tells that you can actually program SQL. So that's a key piece. I say show, don't tell because since the dawn of time, people can lie and therefore employers are trying to screen out the people who are saying, yeah, I can program SQL, but then when they hire them and that's needed for the job and then they can't, then they've just wasted a bunch of time hiring someone who's who can't actually do the job. So just saying you could do something, oftentimes, even if you can, is the lowest form of persuasion. People are skeptical by nature, hiring managers rightfully so. So actually showing that on your portfolio is going to be a huge win. And that brings us to point number four, which is tag management tools. Now, once again, it depends on the job description. Even for this marketing data analyst role, the job postings will differ depending on the company. So focus on what's being listed in terms of technical skills on that job posting. That will guide your way. Sometimes it's going to be tag management. Other times it's going to be analytics web tools. So some examples, probably the most common examples of these is Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4. And, you know, you may be wondering, well, what is a tag manager? Like, how do I get that experience? A tag manager is essentially something where, you know, with one tool, you can insert all the other uh, analytics tools that you want on the website in an organized, clean way. That way you don't have to like mess up the site by inserting them all individually and hard coding them onto the site. So um, there's actually tutorials out there by YouTube channels like Measure School and Analytics Mania that will teach you from A to Z how to become proficient with a tag manager. Um, and, or with a web analytics tool like Google Analytics 4, but you got to show that once again. So once you have those skills, which you can teach yourself, then you have to demonstrate that. My favorite way is just, you know, spend a little bit of money and 
build your own website and then show that you're setting up these tools and using them. Now, the ultimate way is if you have previous experience in a job building these things and using them. So for me, I had some light experience uh, at my previous agency using and working with these tools, uh, having worked at a top performance marketing, digital marketing agency. Now I wasn't an expert, I wasn't even proficient, but I had enough experience that I could talk about them and use them at a fundamental level and understand them. And by you know demonstrating that, maybe showing some screenshots, maybe a video walkthrough of you setting up some tag management to track something custom on the site, because that's another big thing that these tools do. They let you track something custom that the out of the box Google Analytics won't track. So Google Analytics may track traffic and engagement and bounce rate. Uh, and uh, yeah, they recently brought back bounce rate. They, they removed it from G, uh, Google Analytics 4, but now they bring, brought it back. But yeah, um, they recently have these like simple things uh, that they track, but tag management also allows you to track custom things like button clicks, add to carts, purchase orders, lead confirmations, form submissions. So those are things that you need to be able to talk to at a fundamental level and then show that you actually know what you're talking about and you can actually set it up. So that's something worth adding to your portfolio if you don't have it already. It doesn't have to be fancy or use some tool. Get a free screen recorder software or something simple and then put it on there. And then last but not least, the fifth thing that you want to do is add some level of presentation, usually in the form of a slide deck or a video demo or video walk through a screen share where you bring together all those other skill sets that you've added to your portfolio and demonstrate you have good communication skills and presentation skills. And then you go through and show what you've delivered. And you can also attach this to the portfolio as a video of some sort or, or a slide deck. Because at the end of the day, the point of hiring you and the value you bring as a marketing data analyst is not just to play with numbers or crunch numbers, but really to pull those numbers into something significant, concise, digestible, and useful so that leaders can actually see that visualization and benefit from it based off their goals and the pressing questions that they care about. So being able to articulate that concisely and cleanly with your communication and then with your visualizations is going to be a huge plus that will put you over your competition. So if you're a bit artsy, I mean, that's a huge plus because then you're able to turn that together into something visually appealing, but then you can also back that up with numbers to appeal to the logical side of things. And then altogether, you have this storytelling piece where you can show that, hey, before you weren't even sure what you were measuring and what was doing well. Afterwards, I showed with these visualizations that this many people come to your site and this many people convert, and that's how many sales you get. And if you could just improve the conversion rate here because your landing page sucks, you can get more sales. Something like that is really shows your ability to communicate, understand marketing, understand data, and all of that. And that's the soft skill piece that people are missing, the soft skills that will put you ahead. So like, subscribe, and check out my email list for more details. Um, that email list will give you some tips and a free guide on... Um, five indicators that this job title, this job is a perfect fit for you.